Let's launch Keynote. Keynote runs in landscape orientation because that's the way our slides are. Our slides are designed horizontally. And when we launch into Keynote, the first thing we do is we see our slide library. This is a library of presentations that we have created in Keynote. I can create a new presentation by just tapping a button to do so, and I have access to these gorgeous templates, just what you would expect in Keynote. I'm gonna go into this first presentation, Seven Wonders of the World. We open it up, and the first thing you see is a great layout. I have a big, beautiful slide to work on, so I can create my content. I've got some menu items on the top, and I have my slide navigator, something familiar to all Keynote users, on the left-hand side. To move around the slide navigator, I just scroll with my finger. It's that easy. I want to go to a slide, I just tap on it, slide two. Now this slide shows you it has beautiful text, great templates. Slide three, you can see there's a table. You can create tables right in Keynote. The next slide four shows a chart. You can create beautiful charts and graphs in Keynote. Now here I am on slide five. It's an introduction slide. I think I want that further up in the presentation. How do I move a slide around in the navigator without a keyboard or mouse? It's really simple. I'm gonna hold my finger down on it. It pops up out of the canvas, and I drag it wherever I want and let go, and now I've rearranged my slide. Well, that's for one. What if I wanna move a bunch of slides? Watch this, I'm gonna pick slide five, drag it over, and then I'm gonna tap four, tap three, and they create a bundle that I can drag and place anywhere I want, and they snap into place. So multi-touch gestures used to arrange all my slides. Slide eight shows we can have incredible graphics and photos on this. Well, how do I get them in? I've got a media navigator. I can get right into all my content, like my photos and my, my photo albums, and just bring them right on. And when I bring the photos onto a slide, how do I move them around? Of course, I use my finger. I just tap on a photo, and I can drag it around, place it wherever I want. I've got those convenient guides that I'm used to to help me align things. If I want to resize a photo, how do I do that? Easy. I grab one of these blue handles and I start resizing. Now let's say I'm resizing this photo and I want it to be exactly the same size as the one below it. While I'm resizing, I just tap the other one and it sees I want to match them and I let go and they're now matched to the same size. I want to rotate a photo, I use two fingers. I want to mask a photo, watch this, I just double tap and I can expand this image, move it around, tap done. I've just done a mask and that's an advanced technique that people do in presentations. It's so easy in Keynote. What else is easy? Animations. Keynote has beautiful animations. The same is true on the iPad. Let's say I want to bring this chart in with a build. Well, I go into animation mode. It's a button on the top right. And I see there's no build-in assigned yet, so I'm gonna tap the build-in button. And I have access to all these great animations. Let's do a scale. And it will automatically preview that scale. I use the same technique if I want to create transitions on slides. In animation mode, I tap the slide. I see that there hasn't been a transition set yet, so I select it, and I have great transitions. Let's pick the cube, and I'll preview that as well. So very quickly and easily, with just my finger, I'm doing very advanced slide animation techniques. Whenever I'm ready to present, I start wherever I want. We'll start with slide six. I hit the play button. And once I do that, we're now presenting, and I can advance slides by either tapping or swipe right to go forward or left to go back. So I tap to go to the next slide, tap to bring up that chart we just animated, tap to do that cube transition we just did. Now watch this one, when I tap, that's called magic move, automatic animation transitions created in Keynote. A very advanced feature, that's on the iPad as well. Look at the quality of some of these graphics and transitions, they're just beautiful. Anytime I want to get out of it, I just double tap, and I'm back into Keynote, and out to all my presentations. So that's a very quick, brief view of Keynote and all the power it has on the iPad. Now let's go to Pages. Yeah. Like Keynote, with Pages, I see a library of documents that I've created in here. I also can get access to a lot of templates to start anything new. Let's go into this first one, Life in the Serengeti. Again, this is a document that was created right on the iPad. It's beautiful. I can scroll through the texts and headlines and copy. If I tap anywhere in the text, up pops my keyboard 
And down bring, comes the ruler. It's the most beautiful ruler you've ever seen in an application. It gives you access to your uh, most needed formatting commands. If I want to just focus on typing, I can turn it horizontal. I get a bigger keyboard and it's all focused on the text. Now scrolling up and down is something I can do easily with my finger, as you see. But if I want to even get through the document even quicker, I've got a new tool called the Page Navigator. I hold my finger on the right, and now I see a smaller version of each page. I can go to whatever page I want. Let's go to page six. Now here you see something really advanced happening. We're seeing automatic text wrap around a graphic. I can hold down on this giraffe's head and start moving it around, and you see the intelligent auto wrap happening. I can tap on the text to type, or I'm going to tap the info button on the top to bring down a control panel where I can set a whole bunch of things, formats, I can create outlines, I can even affect the layout of this text. With one tap, I'm going to make it a two-column format. And with just that simple, easy control, I can create a beautiful two-column format with text wrapped around it. So that's just a brief view of pages. It is the most beautiful word processor you've ever used. And last, numbers. Numbers, again, gives me a library of spreadsheets I may have created. It has great templates. Let's go into this first one, the soccer team. Now, this is going to show a lot. Right in this first screen, you can see I have great text. I have beautiful photos. Of course, I have tables of data. I have charts linked to tables. I even have tabs along the top. So one document can actually hold many spreadsheets. So let's do some typical tasks you might do with a spreadsheet but all without a keyboard and mouse. I'm going to tap the center table. Let's say I want to rearrange some of the columns. How would I do that with just my finger? I'm going to tap right above the column, Andrew. I'm going to grab this handle and also select the Amy column. And let's move those columns to the end of the table. So I'm going to hold my finger. They pop up. And I just drag them across, let go wherever I want them. And I've reorganized columns in a table. And the linked chart has automatically been updated as well. It's that easy. Let's go to the next tab. I have some more data in a table here and a pie chart associated with it. What about adding more rows of data and maybe doing a, a calculation on those columns to do a subtotal? That's really easy. I'm going to tap the table. I'm going to tap the button on the bottom left to add a row. And now I'm going to double tap the first cell in this row and something really amazing happens. I've brought up the data entry keyboard. This is one of the amazing benefits of a touch interface and soft keyboards. The default keyboard is exactly what you need for numeric data entry to quickly get at and enter data in your cells. Or I could bring up a time and date keyboard to do formulas using times and date. Of course, I can ent enter text. And I've got access to all my formulas and functions. There's over 250 formulas and functions built in to numbers. I can go into any one of them, even get help built on, on it right here by tapping. But what I want to do is simpler than that. I just want to do a sum on the column. And that's, that's a button right there on the keypad. So I'll tap it, sum. And numbers are smart enough that it recognizes where I am, the column of data, and automatically created the formula to sum that column. All I have to do is tap the green checkbox to accept it because it's right. And what if I want to move and fill that across all of them? I could copy and paste, but there's an even faster way. I just tap that cell. I tap fill. And now I drag the yellow box across to where I want to fill across, and it's done that. It's filled across and automatically created my subtotals. You see a pie chart here. I have easy ability to affect that pie chart. I can tap the info button, change it to a different style of graph, or change the way it looks, make it black and white, or give it really vibrant colors. Now, what if I think Chris has done a great job and I want to highlight the we his wedge of that pie? I'm going to drag it out of the, of the pie chart. I just hold my finger on it and drag to position it wherever I want. Again, things that are hard to do on a, on a spreadsheet with a keyboard and mouse are really easy to do with this touch interface. Numbers are so powerful, you can create spreadsheets like this one that has formulas, checkboxes, ratings. I can even take a table just like this one and in one simple tap command, create a form. Now, all the data in that spreadsheet is represented as a form on the tablet that I can enter. I just hit the arrows to move between the different records. I can decide that Andrew here has done a great job goaltending, and accuracy is great. And with a simple touch, now I've created a form, I've entered data, all in an advanced spreadsheet on the iPad. So that's a quick look at iWork on the iPad.